<laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Marvelous work. Amen. I told him I ain't no missing last Sunday was your kick. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, first of all, our lesson today is entitled Kids Are Gonna Grow Up. Or Children Are Gonna Grow Up. Okay? Now I asked my children to come down front and they came down. Amen. Obedient Amen. children. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna see if their parents are just go be in next Sunday. All right, all right. Amen. 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 Don't be planning to be out of here next Sunday either. <laughs> gonna be all in your face. Amen. Yes, I am. And if you ain't here, I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna be all in your face. <laughs> on the phone. The only way it don't happen if you don't answer me. <laughs> Then next time you come, I'll be all in your face. All right. Yes, I am. All up in there. All in there. All up in there. First of all, these lessons are coming. Now, understand that these are lessons that were planned. Okay? Amen. You see our title here for our second Sunday fellowship? Yes. Education that fit our children and the topics that they brought. Well, these are continuation topics. Amen. Okay? Amen. This lesson I'm about to bring to you comes in two parts. First one, to the parent. Man. That's why the children are up here. Man. Next one to the children. Okay. That's why I'm going to ask that the parents be up front. Okay. Now, I want you to understand something first of all. I'm not coming to you like I'm some scholar. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't dare be as arrogant to say to you that I have all the answers or I had all the answers in raising my children. Right. Okay? Because right. I didn't. Right. But I learned some things. Amen. And along the course of learning some things, I incorporated them. Amen. So that is what I'm trying to teach you now. Everybody understand that? Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. Brother Bill, thank you so very much for bringing a reading that scripture into our hearing. I had one other scripture that I want to read to start this thing off. Amen. Because I want our children to understand the severity of obedience to our parents. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 30, in the verses number 17, it says, The eye that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be plucked or picked out mm. by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vulture. Mm. Y'all hear me? Proverbs 30 and 17. The eyes that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vulture. Amen. Children, please obey your parents. Amen. The Bible says obey your father. This is right. Yes. You can't do wrong and get by. Amen. You can't do wrong and go to heaven. Amen. Obey your parents for this is right. Yeah. I don't want to hear any buts. Amen. I don't want to hear any but they are out of touch. Children, any direction your parents give you, obey them. Amen. For this is right. Amen. This is the first commandment we'll promise. What is the promise? That you may live long, long yeah. on this earth. Yeah. Disobedient children don't live out their days. Right. They are short. Okay? Now, the starting point for all of us as Christians is to preach at a ground level, and that ground level is at the foot of the cross. I want to bring this to you from the foot of the cross. Jesus died for us all. Amen. And we all have seen, yes. parents and children included. Yes. We all have seen and come short of the glory of the Lord. Amen. That's why we're here today. This church is could be referred to as sinners anonymous. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. I know you've seen it. I just don't know what it is. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. You ain't gonna tell me that you haven't seen. Amen. Amen. Not to me listen to it. You're not. Because I know better. The Bible teaches me better. Okay? We all acknowledge that we are sinners and we need forgiveness provided through Jesus Christ yes. and the help and strength of the Holy Spirit and each of us to make it through the day. Mm -hmm. We need that from each other. Yes, sir. We need understanding from each other. Yes. Parents need understanding from their children. Children need understanding from their parents. Amen. Brothers and sisters of the church need understanding from each other. Amen. To make it through the day, we have to have understanding from each other and the grace of the Lord. Amen. Now, let's confront some issues, teachers, from God's word. Understand, children, this ain't your brother standing talking to you. This is the word. Mm -hmm. You leave out of here with your mind made up that you're not going to hear it, you ain't talking to me. <laughs> Be careful. Amen. What you tell God, Amen. you're not going to do. Amen. You're going to have that same message for your parents yeah. next week. All right. Be careful. 
what you say you're not going to do. Amen. Well, God has a way of making you do what you thought you would never, ever do. Amen. Amen. In part one of this message, I'd like to draw your attention to five biblical reminders for parents. Uh -huh. Biblical reminder number one. And I, I'll, let me stop right here. You don't even have to worry about unless you want to and you want to study throughout this week. Write these down because every one of you in here is going to get a copy of that. Right. Today's lesson and next week's lesson, you're going to get it. Amen. Everybody in here, in this audience, going to get a call. Amen. Part one of this lesson, I draw your attention to five biblical reminders for parents. Biblical reminder number one is this. Adolescent rebellion, to some extent, is healthy and normal. Children are going to rebel. It's healthy for them. It's healthy for you. To some extent, it is, and it's normal. It is going to happen. I don't care if you raise them in an article. You can an, an article. An article. I don't care where you raise them at. You can raise them in a hut. You can raise them in a ice box. They don't rebel. You can be an Eskimo or Jamaican. They are going to rebel. It is healthy. It's called growing into their own selves. Amen. One of the biggest challenges that faces me as a pastor is parents who become scared of their children that they move toward or into their adolescent years. I've had parents come to me and talk to me like I do. I want to talk to him, but he's so tall. <laughs> oh, he's so big. Oh, she scared me with those words coming out of her mouth. Well, I don't know what to do. That's the biggest challenge I have because I have to be able to tell parents what they ought to do, what they need to do. Amen. Their speech, they say, they change. They change in how they dress, preacher, you don't understand. They got it so taller, they got it so bigger. They act differently. And the friends they hang out with are scary. <laughs> Remember this. Children who grow up to act and to dress like their parents are not healthy children. Right. All right. If you're trying to grow your child into who you are, All right. it is not healthy for them. Amen. I never want my daughter to act like me. <laughs> God knows I don't want my son to be in love with me. I need for them to have their own wings right. so that they can fly places I didn't dare to. Right. Stay with me now. Right. They need to be they need to be given time to stretch. Is the time? Two different, different. They, they. You need to know that they are different from you. Amen. Amen. They need to begin to show you how different they are from you. Amen. Right now, right then, as adolescents and teenagers in your home. Uh -huh. This is a time for you to be able, to, as parents, to see them as different and separate from you and your husband. It's a time to think. It's even time to doubt the entire belief of a parent's lifestyle. Children are supposed to doubt that what we as parents say is the way to go is the way to go. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to doubt it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why wouldn't they? I know. We as parents, we always say, I wouldn't tell you nothing that it, that if it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that as parents, we don't do that at all. Not purposely. Mm -hmm. yeah. But children have to earn or believe in what you are saying. And when they don't, it's helping. Amen. It's healthy for them to go their own path. All right. Just stay with me. Don't, don't shut your ears off right. what I'm trying to say now. Right. I, see, I see some of y'all getting away. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I know you don't. That's why I'm up here and you're out there. Oh, all right. Right. All right. All right. Listen. Amen. Poor children, I got your back. <laughs> next week. All right. It's a period within the safety of the home to prepare themselves to move away. Uh, let me see the hands of the parents that want their children to stay with them for help. No. Well, then let them grow up in your house. Let them take paths. Let them make decisions. Let them do things. Brother Stan is going to get them in trouble. Let them. What we call adolescence must happen. Amen. To this thing to which it can happen and be encouraged, be encouraged within the healthy confines of the house, let it happen. The better off children and parents will be 
if they just let it happen. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, much of this coming to what will come to a working understanding between the parent and the children, and they will emerge in their young adulthood better. Yeah. Let them make the mistakes while they're with you. Uh -huh. Let you show them how they ought to go while they're with you. Uh -huh. Can't put out their fire. Amen. Amen. Can't tell them that they don't have no right to make choices. They Amen. do. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. Some young people don't go through this <laughs> until they graduate from college. Lord have mercy. Oh. Adolescents graduate from college. Right. Or even older for that matter. Some of them 40, 45 years old. We call this postponed adolescent rebellion. Mm -hmm. That may mean that this young person didn't go through the normal upheaval at the time that it was most healthy for them. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a young adult who has honest disagreements with his parent that calls for communication and dialogue or they treat each other in an adult fashion. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you're arguing with your child, you're not arguing with a seven, eight, nine year old adolescent. They're young adults. They see things different than what you think they ought to. Mm -hmm. So you have to talk to them on a level in which they are grown. I know. I've had it said to me, you ain't grown yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you are going to grow up. Mm -hmm. Man, I need for you to know something now so when you get grown and on your own, you stay yes, on sir. your own. Hey, yes, sir. Sir. All right. All right. I start teaching you right now how to stay on your own. Hey, Amen. Okay? Amen. Stay with me. If this fails and the rebellion continues, you need some therapeutic help. Uh, help. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't communicate with each other in a healthy way. Go see a psychiatrist. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. See the doctor. Amen. The Bible tells you. If you're sick, go see a doctor. Amen. That's right. He wasn't just talking about no. Body sick, man is sick too. Amen. Parents, don't try to teach your children how to be parent when you sick. Well, all right. Nothing worse than a crazy parent trying to teach a child how to be an adult. What you gonna do, train them up? Train them up, train them up how to be crazy? Yeah, I said crazy. Are you gonna be said therapeutically? You gonna train them up? Train them up how to be mentally ill? <laughs> Biblical reminder number two. The Bible encourages loving confrontation. Amen. Yeah. You ain't gonna be getting all up in my face talking crazy to me. I will knock you out. Oh, yes. <laughs> that ain't what the Bible said. Amen. Amen. The Bible ain't said nothing about you putting your hand on your children. No, it did not. The Bible said discipline them. I said, the Bible ain't said nothing about you putting your hand on your children in a confrontational manner. You ain't disciplining them. I'm going to tell you what you're doing in a few minutes. Loving confrontations is necessary if God's grace is to operate in your house. Amen. That's right. Loving confrontation between you and your son and you and your daughter is necessary. Amen. In a house of God. Amen. All right. You don't believe me? Turn in your Bible to Ephesians. The chapter is 4. Come on. Give me the time. The verse is 26. I'm going to teach y'all prayer some today. Y'all going to hold me in the future. I got y'all. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. States that we are to express our anger, our anger in a way in which we are not to sin, right? Right, man. Y'all got that? Yes, Get angry and sin not. Yes. Everybody got it? Yes. Now turn in your Bible to Matthew, chapter 5, and in verses 18. Remember, get angry, sin not. Sin not. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read 5 and 18 of Matthew. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, mm -hmm. and the earth pass, pass away, one jot of one little, one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Is that what the Bible said? Amen. 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 I want to add to this. This. When the Bible says, 
endeavor to work together as brothers and sisters of the church. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't get angry. <coughs> Sin not. Work together as church, as members, right? Right. As husband and wife are brothers and sisters of the church. Do you not agree? Yeah. Husband and wife are brothers and sisters of the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, so are children. Amen. 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 Yeah. They are brothers yeah. and sisters right. of the church. Amen. Amen. We are to work together with our brother and our sister in Christ with whom we have a difference and endeavor to work out those differences. All right. Honest confrontation and love should happen within the context of a nuclear family, in this case, the church. You're not going to tell me that if your children confront you here in the church, you're going to treat them differently than what you would if they were at home. Mm -hmm. If you tell me that, then you're wrong. All right. I'm glad I'm here in the church because I'll knock him out. Uh-uh. 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 You're going to treat your brother and sister the same way you treat your other brother and sister. If you don't, you have sinned. Amen. 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 You Good have teacher. sinned. Yes. Good teacher. You can't knock your brother and sister upside the head. Amen. Amen. Just because they happen to be your children. Amen. That's right. Amen. Hello? Amen. 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 You can't put your hand on your brother and sister. Amen. Just because they disagree with what you they you telling them. Amen. Hello? Amen. Yeah. Oh, they don't like this, y'all. That's all right. They don't all right. like this. Parents. I look at their face. I read their faces till they don't like it. They looking down. All right. They have looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I got y'all. Y'all come back next week. <laughs> Loving confrontation, I tell you, is necessary in God's grace. If God's grace is to be operated, you say, I'm going to give them over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you put your hands on them. Mm -hmm. You need to be giving yourself <laughs> over to the Lord. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Don't you know the Bible is true when it says, if you hurt one of these little man, one of mine, mm -hmm. it ain't just talking to other folk. Mm -hmm. It's talking about you as a parent. Mm -hmm. Hurt one of these little ones if you want. All right. Come out this man and I'll do what I want to do with him. God gave you these children. Amen. 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 Hurt one of them. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Hurt one of them. Amen. You ain't got to listen to them. Lead tonight and put your hand on one of them. Right. I can promise you one thing. You will live to yeah. regret it. Amen. Amen. It's all right, preacher. Yes, you will. God ain't slack concerning his promises. He gonna deal with you. Mm -hmm. Just like he gonna deal with the children when they disobey, mm -hmm. he gonna deal with you. All right, right. Amen. Amen. You know how I think sometimes we as parents, we think that we got some type of a uh, past. Mm -hmm. God gave it to me, he want me to raise him like I need to raise him. No, he wants you to raise him like he said. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. But there are disagreements about family gathering, or tasting music, bar friends, girlfriend. It's easy for us to get angry and to shut down. We must better engage in a negotiation that deal with the reality of the individual needs of each family member before we set in concrete our own well-intentioned plan for the family. In other words, don't get to the point where you tell your children it's going to be this way or no way. Uh -huh. You set things in concrete. Uh -huh. You don't give them any leeway. You don't give them an opportunity to make their own decision. Right. Be careful to ask for. Amen. Amen. If you don't allow them to make decisions now while they're under your roof, guess what they're going to be doing forever? Calling you Amen. for a decision. Amen. And just wait until they get some in-laws. It's in here. I'm going to cover. In-laws. <laughs> In-laws tell them one thing, you tell them another. You all in their ear. You told them you want them to be grown, but you still in their ear. Because you didn't train them when they was at home on how to stand on something. Even if it's standing against me. You got no problem with my daughter standing up for what she think is right. She can stand up for what she feels is right in my presence. I urge it. I did it. My mama didn't call it defiant. Boy, growing up, but let me show you something now. <laughs> this is what's going to happen if you continue down this road. But teach me. Uh -huh. Don't beat me. Right. 
The more you beat a child, the more they are prone to do what you don't want them to do. Amen. And then when they do it, and they don't have a direction from you on what to do next, who fault is going to be yours? It's going to be your fault. Because the Bible told you to raise them. But see, all we get out of raising is beat. Amen. Raise up a child in the way it should go. I'm going to put that dope in the next verse we say it. Spare a ride, drop on the child. Amen. All we care about is carrying a big club and saying nothing. Preach. Learn how to let your adolescent children express themselves in your house without the threat of being killed. <laughs> Biblical. Amen. Don't shut down. Negotiate. Amen. The problem with us as parents is we're not good negotiators. And we don't want our children to know it. Ha <laughs> ha! They know it. I want to go out and I want to stay out past curfew. We can't do it. Well, why can't I do it? Because I said so. See? You can't negotiate. <laughs> well, you can do it. But this is what I want from you. If you do it. If I give you a curfew, I don't want about to tell anything to you about you cleaning up your room or taking out the garbage. The yard shouldn't be mowed by your dad, it should be mowed by you. Your curfew can go up on a whole nother hour if you can agree to these things. Uh uh, daddy's supposed to do it. Okay, then you know that's my Negotiate! We're afraid of negotiation. We want to set stuff in stone. And don't move off. Amen. That's it. Set up that point. Because I said, I'm going to be that way in my house. Amen. Uh -huh. I know a child who was told that when I worked for the Department of Children's Service, and Dad told me it's going to be this way in my house as long as you're under my, under my roof. This is the way it's going to be. Well, they got burned out. <coughs> <coughs> the boy burned out. Oh, yeah, he burned them out. They had to go stay with some other people. It wasn't his room. No more. Boy, did what he want to do. Can't tell him what to do with somebody else. How? Hello? He kept. Hello? You'd be surprised what a little light and some fluid to do. I'm going to push these wood burn my house now. I'm going to kill him. Put your hand on one of them if you want. You won't have a roof in jail. I'm just saying. Learn to negotiate with your children. That's biblical reminder number two. It says, have a loving confrontation with your children. Biblical reminder number three. Individual responsibility is one of the major things that goes throughout the whole entire Bible. We have free will. As a child of God, he gives each one of us free will. His and her free will don't stop just because they have to be your children. Amen. They're still brothers and sisters of the church. Yes. Yes. They got free will. Yes, sir. Hold on now. Hold on, mom and dad. Y'all you know, give me baby. Y'all know amen. I got something, right? Amen. Y'all already know I got something. <laughs> Say amen. amen. It's the Bible. Amen. Okay. You and I live in a day in which we can benefit from seeing family problems as being intergenerational, passed on from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. This ain't nothing new. Amen. Let me show you what I mean. Turn in your Bible to Ezekiel, chapter 1. We should not regulate to others the responsibility for our own action, and we are to function truthfully as adults. We must let our children live their <coughs> life. That's Bible. I'm giving it to you right. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse number 8. Anybody there? Read out loud. And they what? They had the hand of a man. They had the hand of a man. Under their wing. Under their wing. Ezekiel 18, I'm sorry, 18 and 1. Yeah, we went a little too far. But I know where you were coming from. I was about to talk about the talk. I want to talk about that right now. Give me 18. Okay. And 1. Read for me. 18 and 1. The word of the Lord came to me again. The word, that's what we are. The word of the Lord came to me. Saying. What did it say? What do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Say what does this proverb mean? 
Same. When you use it concerning the children of Israel, read on. Same. The fathers have eaten sour grapes. The father have eaten sour grapes. The children's teeth mm -hmm. are set on edge. The children's teeth are on edge. They're ready to divide. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. As I live. As I live. Says the Lord God. Says the Lord God. You, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. You shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. God goes on to distinguish between the parent and the child, acknowledging that although there are family issues that move from one generation to another, mm -hmm. God has given freedom. Mm -hmm. He describes a man, only in that proverb, he describes a man who lives in obedience to the law, but his children don't. Amen. The father is faithful to the decree of, of God, but his son is not. His son is violent. His son sheds blood and disobeys the teaching of God. He lives a very different lifestyle than the father. God declared that the right of this young man to live a different lifestyle from his father and to face consequences of such action. All right. I don't care how bad your son is, he got a right to live his life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He got a right to live it. Because guess what? Can't nobody stand in judgment for what he do Amen. but him. All right. Amen. Amen. Can anybody stand in judgment for you all, young folk? But you. Amen. Yes, mom and dad should allow you to live your life. Uh -huh. And no, they shouldn't be so demanding about when and how and what you do. Because at some point as an adolescent, you have to make those decisions. See, what you practice now is probably what you're going to teach your children. All right. If you don't teach them anything about curfew, and you tell them that they can come in anytime they want to, hmm. one night they ain't going to come in. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. If you teach them that they don't have to come in and they can hang out with anybody they want to, they can live their life and go anywhere the they want to and have the time free they want to, one day they're going to meet somebody they shouldn't. Right. Amen. Right. One day they're going to live, one day they're going to live in such a way that's going to put them and you to a disgrace. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Somebody once told me ain't nothing that late. Open up that late at night button. Well. Yeah. Amen. Watch your mouth, Prince. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> What you out there for? Amen. I want to see what's happening every time of night. Mm. Listen to you, preacher. Mm. I'm telling you from experience. Amen. I can promise you that once you see one time what's out there, you're going to wonder why you decided to go out there. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing out there that means you no good. Amen. You can have fun so much until you get sick of it. Mm -hmm. And then what you call fun won't be. <laughs> Second part of that proverb goes, he has a son who is violent and shed of blood. Okay? He goes on to say that he eats from up on the mountaintop, he defies his neighbor's wife, he oppresses the poor and the needy, he commits robbery and does not destroy the plague. He lifts up his eyes to the idols, he commits abom abomination, he takes advances on a curt on a curt accrued interest, and he and he lives a way that puts his father to shame. Amen. All right. He has done all these abominable things, and he shall surely die. Hmm. And his blood shall be upon himself. All right. What we as parents need to understand is how our children live ain't really us. Amen. Amen. We not we need to stop thinking that okay, you go out there and you put me to shame. No, not really. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. You go out there and put yourself to shame. Amen. All right. Because people know me. Uh -huh. That's right. They know what I stand for. Right. They don't know what you stand That's for right. until you show them. Amen. And then when you find when they find out you don't stand for what your parents stand for, mm -hmm. they ain't gonna give you what they give your parents. Amen. Respect is everything. Yes, amen. Amen. Yeah. You can get more with respect than you can with good interest. Amen. You don't believe me? I had no credit. Amen. None coming to college. Mm -hmm. My grandmother's word gave me all the credit I need. All right, man. Amen. Amen. Let him have it, baby. <laughs> it's all right. Just let him have what he needs. Uh -huh. I went and got what I needed. Uh -huh. And some more. Uh -huh. 
On her word, because she lived a certain way. People don't care nothing about you when you live it all. Will it Amen. But if a man's son sees his father, what he sees all the sin that his father has done, consider and does not likewise, but he does he does no wrong, he shall not die for his father iniquity. He shall live. As for the father, because he practiced extortion and robbed his brother and did what is not good and money people, he died for his iniquity. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses number 14 through 18. Amen. Biblical reminder number four and the last one. This is one I told you that I was going to get to. You and I as parents are not to provoke our children to anger. Amen. 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 That, that's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Don't provoke them. Mm -hmm. You know how we do sometimes. We just poke at them. Mm -hmm. We poke at them. We'll ask them ten times, do you hear me? Mm -hmm. You know they're standing by here. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? <laughs> you do that one more time, I ain't going to hear nothing. My ear going to be busted. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. You and I have witnessed all classic scenes in the supermarket when a child is going down through there and he's crying and yelling and kicking. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Let me tell you something. This is a story. Let me read it to you in a story, Pastor. Father's shopping with his child who was on the verge of putting on a scene. The father quietly was saying, Calm down, Tom. Everything's okay, Tom. We'll be out of here soon, Tom. Tom, be patient. Somebody watching it, dad, he was very impressed with him, and he followed the father around the supermarket. Mm -hmm. He was overwhelmed with the kindly way in which the father was functioning under these circumstances. So finally, the observer walked up to the father and said, I'm so impressed with the calm and patient way in which you are dealing with your son, Tom. The father responded, what do you mean, my son, Tom? I'm Tom. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Read this to you and this is yours. If we are dealing with a teenager trying to come to some sense of their own identity, we need to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, be talking to ourselves and endeavoring to see the Lord's picture, asking the Lord's help to remain reasonably calm in the circumstances of parenting. Calm down. Be patient. It's going to be all right. Amen. It'll be over soon. They'll be at my house out the wire. Let it happen. Let it go. Calm down. Be patient. Don't see it. Amen. 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 Good if you drive your parents to sin, it's not that sin alone. Amen. You're going to hell for it too. You don't care. Sin is a sin is a sin. <clears throat> you know your parents have a short view and you keep on prodding and pushing mm. and make them sin. Mm -hmm. You sin it too. Mm -hmm. Man. Well, you're gonna go to hell mm -hmm. for that sin. Mm -hmm. See, the reason I'm talking to you so candidly is because I love you to death. Mm -hmm. Nothing in the world I wouldn't do for y'all. Nothing. You can ask me to try that if you want. Nothing I wouldn't do for you. You see what I mean to do is a done deal. I'd be sure on my back, literally. I ain't going to hell for you. And I don't want my parents out there to go to hell. For you. Amen, brother. I don't want you going to hell. Amen. I don't want you going to hell for your parents. Amen. I want you to do right. Obey your parents, for this is right. Amen. That's Bible. It is right. You cannot go to heaven wrong. Amen. Do it because it's right. One day you're going to get from under their roof. Yes. I'm talking to them next week about when you leave their house. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to like them. They'll be sitting right up here. I'm going to be in your face. Just like I'm in your face. I'll be sitting right up here. I'm going to be talking right to them. Because I know us. 
I need a commitment from you, no matter how difficult it is. I need for you to promise me and God that yes. you're going to do right. Yes, sir. Regardless mm -hmm. of what they do. Amen. Regardless Amen. of what they say, you going to do right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's all I need. With that, I got you. You come to me about anything they do, I promise you, they ain't going to like me when they come out of that office. They do anything to you, say, I'm like the Lord. Can't mess with my young folk. Okay. They try to do right. You know, right. up the mm -hmm. Amen. Young ladies, Amen. come to Sunday school to express yourself in Sunday school. Amen. Get your question answered. You're trying Amen. to do right. Yes. Right. That's right. Come on, allow your parents to be the you. If you don't know my number, get it. Call me. I'll call them. They know I'll call them. Amen. As young adolescents, you, you, you deserve freedom Amen. to grow up and make choices on your own. Yeah. But understand, when you make decisions, mm -hmm. when you make choices, if they are wrong, can't nobody stand in those consequences but you. That's Amen. right. Have the freedom, though, to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. You should have the freedom. God says in his word, I just gave it to you, that you should have it. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are Christians of free will. You are our brothers and sisters too. Not just our children. You are our yeah. brothers and sisters. Yeah. We got the same right and title to every other brother and sister in this church. Amen. Can't get angry at you and sin because I'm angry. Just because you're my daughter. Kind of sense that make all I go to hell. Amen. And gasoline, shut your mouth, preach. Amen. Can't do that to you. God gave you to us to do the best we can for you. Amen. You are a gift Amen. from God Amen. to us as parents. Amen. Amen. I treat you any different than I'm supposed to in this book. I'm saying to God that I don't care nothing about your gift. Well, and then I'm going to get on my knees and pray for other gifts. Amen. Something wrong with me. Amen. Something got to be wrong with you to be asking God for other stuff when you can't do right by the gift he gave you. Amen. 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 Last but not least, children, as hard as it is for you to believe, your parents are gifts from God. Amen. 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 God gave you these parents because he knew exactly what you were going to need. Amen. Any other parent can't give it to you. Amen. I wish I had another mom and dad. No, you do not. <laughs> I wish I could go live somewhere else. No, you can't do not. What you really saying is God made a mistake giving you the parents he gave you? I dare you to say it. I dare you to say that God made a mistake. Wow. That's what you're saying. Parents, I dare you to say God gave me made a mistake and give me my child. What he come from? What is wrong with him? I dare you to say that. What is wrong with you? God made a mistake? No. God never <laughs> makes a mistake. Amen. 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 Education that fit our children and parents. I need for you to understand something, church. Before we can grow and bring people into the church, we're going to have to get it right in our house. Amen. 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 Now, you may not care nothing about the church growing. Mm -hmm. Don't you say that out loud. <laughs> as a Christian, All right. as a baptized member of this church, Amen. don't you say that out loud. Amen. I'll tell you about what God do then. Hmm. If you care, you try to get it right in your personal place, That's yes. right. yes. in your home, yes. Amen. in your relationship with your children, mm -hmm. in your relationship with each other. Yes. Next right. Lord's Day, I'm going to talk about the relationship with parents and how bad that can be for children, mm -hmm. whether they married or not. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 We teach our children stuff. We don't think we're teaching them. Amen. Because we have some relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. I might know my wife. I might know when she's kidding. Mm -hmm. My child may not. Mm 
Okay. My grandmother didn't even know. This day, we were coming home today. She didn't even know we were playing. We were talking about each other's mama. <laughs> she just stop it. I mean, stop it. <laughs> we looking at each other like what? What you say? don't know. That's right. They see you doing the same thing. They think okay, it's wait a minute. Hello? If grandmama couldn't tell, she got ninety something years old. What we'll make you think they gonna automatically know? Tell yeah, them what you do, what you say, how you act, and where you go around your children. Yeah, I told you a few Sundays ago, we're gonna have to go back and learn how to do grown folk stuff in grown folk places. Amen. All right. All right. You can't sit here and everything around your children and expect them not to be there. They're gonna be just like you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm seeing children now. He can't wait to cut somebody out. <laughs> My dad said he's going to cut somebody out. So I'm doing it. Right yeah. <laughs> to school and they're going to call you. <laughs> oh, they're out here <laughs> Hello? Be careful. You got to curse somebody? You just have to curse somebody. If you just have. I mean, you just, you. <laughs> You got to check yourself out. Good, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> if they in the other room, take this phone out to the curb. <laughs> Left in here! <laughs> you so and so. Come on, preacher. <laughs> you better try to get to your preacher soon as you say it, because you're going to need somebody to pray for you. Come on. Preacher, can you meet me up at the church? church I have seen. Come on. Hello? I'm just saying. If you got to do it, yeah, hey, do I wasn't born y'all some idiot. Right? <laughs> oh, y'all first something. Y'all ain't fooling me. You ain't fooling your preacher. Preacher, I do not curse. Okay. <laughs> you don't curse on Sundays? <laughs> not on Sunday. I said, not on Sunday. <laughs> don't, don't, on Sunday. <laughs> don't do it on Saturday. Don't do it on Saturday. Don't do it on Sunday. Don't do it on Sunday. You have to do it. No, I ain't gonna tell you. Don't you do it? Hey, baby. Try that. Just a little Monday. Use some other words instead of curse words. Hot Namic, John Granite. Something like that. I see you say it in a certain way. Sound like you curse. Yeah, my grandma could say a word mess and sound like you. What? Oh. Amen? Amen. My lesson today. I want you to understand. My, my children, be clear about this. You have no choice in doing what's right Amen. as Christians. Amen. You gotta do it. Uh -oh. Obedience to parents is a must. Amen. Amen. Okay? <clears throat> they got an obligation that next week they're gonna hear about. They must. One of them is they can't be making you angry all willy nilly. Amen. If you say you're not gonna do anything, leave it alone, parent. If you're not gonna do it, he's not gonna do it. He got the answer. I just told you in Ezekiel chapter 18, that son has to answer for his own stuff. Mm -hmm. Let him answer. I don't. As long as you're on a nine group, you're going to do what I say. You ain't got to do what I say. I don't want to put you out either because I'm going to worry about you. I don't want to be worried. Worrying is a sin. You know you're going to worry about it when you're out. Well, so I guess you understand I'm caught between this and that. Yes, you are. Put him out. Put him out. Put the girl and the, 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 the boy out. Mm. And then worry about it mm. and go to hell. Because well, <laughs> it's a sin. If you don't want to put them out, they ain't doing what you say. Let them do what they do and let God do what he does. Amen. Under your roof. Mm. Under your roof. Mm. Let them grow up under your roof. Mm. If nothing else, you'll be there to say, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you that was going to happen? A couple of months ago, you was all been winning them. Look at you today. Talk to him behind them ball. That's a golden opportunity. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> so what I got to say because I ain't coming back. Never. Amen. No more. All right. Amen. I told you this is where you were headed. Amen. Say it. Tell him to his face. In the ball. I don't care if you're crying. Amen. I don't care if she said please. Amen. All right. All right. Say nope and I'll see you at court. Okay. Please. <laughs> Let God do. Well, God does. But see, I know us. 
We're going to go walk into house. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. We're going to take our loans on the car. No. We're going to borrow money from the church. Amen. 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 No, I didn't tell you that my baby stay up just like that. I know I told you. Lord, but you, you got to help me. I already know. Look at my face. Look at my face. Zoom in. Close. This is where I'm going to look. I hear you. But we don't let the Lord do his work. Amen. <laughs> the church ain't going to be able to help. Amen. All right, now. You're going to leave out cussing the church. I've been giving my time for 25 years. No. He can't help me get my baby out of jail. You're going to learn to listen to me. Amen. I'm going to make you let God be God. That's right. Around here, have enough stuff to retire on. Give it to the prison. Give a little Johnny out of trouble every. No. And then Johnny get out of jail. Still Ten years later, and you and him both paying a mortgage that you didn't have before he went in there. He ain't working because he can't. The only little check that you get, can't hardly make. Little Johnny gonna be selling dope at your house. Well, <laughs> he, got, he got to make a living. <clears throat> and where you gonna be? In jail again. I know I went on a little bit longer. I know I did. It's all right. Amen. It's all right. I did it on purpose. We're not gonna have service this evening. Amen. <laughs> I know y'all want to say amen. I know I told you earlier today. We were. I know I did, but I thought I'd go a little earlier because I'm a little later with this lesson because I need to get something across. All right. And I know even if I ask y'all if you're coming back, most of y'all going to sit on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you may see me back at the door and say, you know, I want to come back, but <laughs> you went so long, preacher. I got something else I need to do, so I ain't going to give you opportunity to block to the preacher. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now, I'll be moving. Let me do like Sister Land, dude. Sister so Land don't lie. Church, we must do better at home. That's right. That's right. Amen. Talk to your children. Amen. Allow them the opportunity to say what they need to say to you. That's right. Negotiate. Amen. That's negotiate. Right. I want to see my grandbaby. I got to negotiate with that hard head daughter of mine. Well, <laughs> I do. Right. I have to negotiate with her. I ain't ashamed to say I got to negotiate with her. Mm -hmm. I got to promise to keep him some weekend. <laughs> All right. Most holiday. Most holiday. <laughs> Pick them up out of school. Oh All kinds of stuff I got to promise to see. Let me know. See you right. But I want to see my grandson. I have to negotiate. Right. You have to negotiate with your children. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't mad at the preacher, is you? No, no. All right, first of all, the commandments to hear you need to hear you preach. Amen. Amen. Believe Amen. me, because I brought it to you about the Bible. Amen. And if you've been doing some of the things that I talked about, you need to repent of it. Amen. You need to repent. 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 All right. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> you got the opportunity to do it first. If you've done something wrong, I'm sorry. That's it. I apologize. I'm gonna do much better. I'm gonna try my best to do better. I'm gonna get you that. Oh, man. I'm, I'm gonna do that. You want to put yourself back in good grace with God. You got to do that. Amen. 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 Confess your fault. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. Mm -hmm. That's it. Most mm -hmm. of the problem we have with our children is that they can't get to that point to say, I was wrong. Amen. Most of the problem we have with our parents is that they can't get to that point to say, I was wrong. That's right. I was wrong. Confess your fault one to another. You know what the Bible says about brothers and sisters? Confess your fault one to another. Our children are our brothers and our sisters. Amen. They say enough time. Amen. And if you're not baptized, they have shooting so regular in Memphis. I'm going to visit Memphis. Oh, yeah. 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 